Okay, we're continuing with some of our testing for the igniter for the turbo rocket engine system. This is a uh, version of the uh, hydrogen oxygen torch igniter uh, that we'll be testing uh, that will provide the ignition for the turbo rocket element. The igniter is shown right here, and it's a small torch type igniter, um, and it is uh, consists of a, an oxygen supply coming in from this port, a fuel supply indicated by the red uh, indicator there, um, and then a uh, just a spark plug uh, to ignite the mixture. And then it's a uh, set of double choked orifices. These are choked orifices in each of the uh, propellant lines, the oxidizer and the fuel. And then uh, there's a choked orifice at the mouth of the, uh, at the throat of the, uh, of the igniter. Um, and uh, as long as the supply pressures are above the resultant choking pressure um, in the chamber, then you can get choking um, at the uh, inlet to the uh, propellant supplies and then the combustor and reduce pressure for the mixture ratio and flow rates that are that emerge from that uh, that can be choked here too. So that's the arrangement. Um, of course we have the fuel solenoid valve, the oxidizer um, uh, valve, and then the purge valve which is just nitrogen. Our system is set up um, as shown before. We run from this manual control box. Uh, we can turn off and on the uh, the fuel solenoid, the oxidizer solenoid, and then the perch. The spark plug uh, is controlled simply by a, uh, um, you know, a line cord, um, and it powers any Einstein transformer, which uh, then provides power to the spark plug. Let me show back here. Um, it's uh, somewhat primitive, but it works well, and it's pretty robust. Um, and then our control systems for the gases are supplied by our key bottles. Here we have the uh, oxidizer, um, and it's set pressure in the regulator here. We have um, the fuel, uh, which is controlled here. And we have a dome-loaded regulator that is shown right there out from this hand loader. Uh, so we have our supply pressure in the tank, and then we can set that pressure with our dome loader uh, to provide the pressure we want uh, to provide the proper choking arrangements. And of course, this is our nitrogen, um, which is set for a reasonable pressure so that we can get some purging action. So, so the system is activated simply uh, by turning on the oxidizer and fuel um, and uh, with the spark plug. We uh, you generally uh, activate the spark plug first and then we turn on the fuel and oxidizer. So let's do that. Let's turn on the spark plug. Okay, and spark plug is on. Okay, now let's open our fuel and oxidizer. That popping sound is uh, the ignition occurring within the uh, within the system, within the, within the chamber. It's sort of a combustion instability, and it's pretty small. You can't really see the flame, um, but uh, that popping indicates that there is combustion kind of going on through our system. And uh, the system can be you know shut off if we need to, or it can be reactivated. You can also turn on the perch to set the system off. If we shut that down, it should reignite. And by adjusting our supply pressures, we can change the relative combustion uh, aspect of that. So we can kind of raise this up a little bit, the dome loader or lower it down. A little bit more, uh, as we lower the, the supply pressure here, we get a, a more uh, uh, a leaner mixture. Uh, it's still running pretty, pretty fuel rich, which is what we want. And we can up our oxidizer pressure if we want to. that's our system and that's how we can uh, ignite the, uh, uh, the the turbo rocket engine it's not a real beautiful flame like you might expect but um, it is sufficient for our purposes that is our igniter and a successful igniter test so I'm gonna shut these uh, shut the oxidizer off and then the hydrogen
a little after burning there. And then we'll purge it a little bit. Put a little oxygen in there, see if we can reignite it. That doesn't sound too bad. Shut it off with a purge. Nice, tidy, controllable little flame for our system. Okay, I'm gonna shut the system off. Hit the purge. Turn off the igniter. And that's our test. So in discussing the uh, double choking uh, that's used in the igniter, I thought it might be useful to uh, show kind of a graphic representation of that and kind of walk you through the the mathy part of it, uh, just kind of explain how that kind of works, because it's kind of interesting and, and kind of useful. So here in this schematic, what you're seeing is the flow rate of the fuel and the flow rate of the oxidizer going into the igniter chamber and then mixing, burning, producing a gas that comes out through this throat here and through the little nozzle here. We don't really have much of an expansion on it, but we do have a throat that was shown in the uh, uh, the igniter at the, at the tip there. And then as I explained before, there are insert orifices in each of the propellant lines, you know, coming into the igniter. So, so how this works is um, when you have a choked orifice and it is above the choking pressure ratio, then the flow rate through that orifice is a linear function of the upstream pressure and the throat area. Um, also, the gas properties um, are, are in here, but those are basically a constant. So, for example, in our case, if we have hydrogen flowing in this line, the flow rate through that choked orifice is, again, if the pressure ratio P sub F is above the critical pressure ratio between P sub F and the igniter chamber pressure, then it's choked, which means that it's at the speed of sound going through this orifice. And as long as this uh, pressure is above that critical pressure ratio, uh, the throat remains choked, and the flow rate is a linear function of that pressure. So the flow rate of the fuel is the th throat area times the supply pressure, this pressure here, times the ratio of specific heats gamma of the gas, which is hydrogen in this case, times the square root of uh, two over gamma the fuel plus one raised to the gamma plus one over gamma minus one divided by square root of gamma of the fuel times the gas constant of the fuel times the temperature of the fuel. So that's the that's the flow rate. And the same thing applies to the, to the, to the oxidizer side. Here we have oxidizer coming in here. It has a supply pressure. Um, it has some throat area in it. Also, its, uh, its flow rate is kind of the same, except it now it's the oxidizer properties. In our case, we're using gaseous oxygen. So gamma is that of oxygen and R and is, is, is that of oxygen. It also has a throat ratio and a, and a particular supply pressure that we give. Okay, so those are the, the, the fuel pressures. Now on the, on, the, on the igniter side, on the main chamber side, the same thing is true for its choked orifice. Here though, it is the sum of these two flow rates that we already know, or that we already have, are providing, times the throat area um, of the igniter, times the igniter pressure present within here, times gamma, of the combustion process, of the combustion products. So we mix the uh, propellants, the fuel and the oxidizer, at some mixture ratio. They burn and they produce a gas that is hot, and um, it is uh, it has a, uh, a gas constant for that combust the products of combustion. That's gamma of the combustor. Um, the uh, gas constant of the of the combustor and also the T of combustion. So that's the, the temperature that the gases arrive at. And those products are all a function of, of the mixture ratio and they, they can be computed beforehand. Um, and so that, is the, uh, uh, so that is the system that we have. So basically what we have is we have three equations and three unknowns that need to be solved. Uh, and we're, we're sort of assuming that the gas properties uh, of the combustion process, gamma sub, uh, gamma sub combustion and R sub uh, combustor and T sub combust combustor are basically function of the mixture ratio, uh, and we can just represent that when we when we know the mixture ratio. Um, so we have basically three equations and three unknowns. So our three equations are the uh, the flow rate of the oxidizer, the flow rate of the fuel, 
and then the some of the flow rates going um, through the oxidizer, uh, through the excuse me through the main main combustor. So, but our three unknowns therefore are the flow rate of the fuel, the flow rate of the oxidizer, and the ignite uh, the the pressure in the igniter chamber. So, uh, with those. Um, um, so with three equations and three unknowns, we can simultaneously solve the system of equations uh, to determine the flow rates um, that um, are going to uh, go through this system and what the chamber pressure is and what the, uh, um, uh, and what the uh, gas properties are and what the mixture ratio is going to be, provided that we are providing a, 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 for a given uh, su fuel supply pressure and a given oxidizer supply pressure and then given throat areas. So we can just use a, a, you know, a typical solver tool. I'm using TK solver in this case. So we have our set, set, sets of equations. So we, both, we supply the orifice ratio, which is the, the, the area of the throat for the oxidizer and its supply pressure. We do the same from the fuel. We have an orifice size and a supply pressure. And then we have a, uh, an oxidizer, or excuse me, the main igniter throat area. Uh, which is given by this diameter here. And then we, we've made the, the gas properties a function of the mixture ratio, um, and it's just kind of a linear relationship uh, that, that we've used um, to represent that. And you can get those gas properties as a function of, of the resultant mixture ratio just from any of a variety of equilibrium combustion codes. Like I use GUI PEP. Uh, you can also use uh, TK, uh, TDK, uh, and uh, ODE uh, to solve those, um, or just solve them yourself with uh, um, with uh, you know equilibrium thermodynamic conditions. Pretty straightforward. Anyway, so with those conditions and the gas properties we know, uh, we can simultaneously solve this equation, um, these three equations, and then we get the resultant flow rate of the fuel, the resultant flow rate of the oxidizer, the resultant mixture ratio. And then the chamber pressure um, uh, that we're uh, that we're going to uh, get the resultant chamber pressure for this system, and so when we put those values in and the gas properties in this particular case and these given orifice sizes, and supply them with 65 psig for the oxidizer and 250 psig for the fuel pressure, we get um, we get a solution. Uh, the chamber pressure or the igniter pressure is about 30.7 psig. It's running at a mixture ratio of about you know 1.03, and so uh, that chamber pressure of 30 psig means that the pressure ratio between the gas, uh, the supply, uh, the propellant supply pressure, and the chamber pressure is above the critical pressure ratio. So you can see here for that solution uh, at 30 psig that the critical pressure ratio um, needs to be 1.89 for for the oxidizer. And so uh, we are definitely above that critical pressure ratio. 65 relative to 30 is, is above 1.89. Same with the fuel. We're well above it there. And so we know we're, both, we're choked for the fuel and the oxidizer. And so this is a valid solution for the supply pressures uh, that we've chosen to use for this system. So uh, that's how we do that, uh, that calculation, that double choke orifice calculation. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And... Uh, with those set pressures for those given orifices, then we know that we're going to get a mixture ratio of a little over one, which is pretty fuel rich and it's what we want, um, and a modest chamber pressure of a little over 30 psig. So I hope that kind of clarified uh, that a little bit uh, on how that works, um, and you can use that in your own systems if you're if you're so inclined.